everyone, today's tutorial is a look that I wore to a cocktail party. It's perfect if you are a wedding guest or if you have any elegant parties to attend. We have a winter and a summer lip option, so I got you covered all year round. Also, this is a great tutorial if you are looking for techniques to make the eyes look much bigger and brighter. Starting with the base today, I'm revisiting an old favorite combination, the Bourgeois Healthy Mix, mixed with a dot of the L'Oreal True Match, just to lift the shade a touch. Using a pressing motion, I'm applying foundation to the majority of my face so that the complexion looks really even and perfected because presumably we're going somewhere kind of special. Rouge Bunny Rouge, Sea of Clouds. This highlight makes the Merry Luminizer look like child's play. It is intense. So much so that I'm mixing a dot with the leftover foundation on the back of my hand just to dilute it a bit and then dabbing on the high points of the face, making sure to blend those edges really, really well. Hopefully you can see the gloss on my cheekbones here. The highlight is so epic. And that my friends is strobing. Congratulations, we did it. Knocking back some dark circles with some under eye concealer, my current favorite is the Charlotte Tilbury, the retoucher. <laughs> I'm doing another under eye concealer smackdown on my blog very soon, so keep a lookout. Priming the eyes with Benefit Stay Don't Stray, and this has coverage. I am going for a seriously vampy lip today, and it always looks a bit neater to me once the purple veins on the eyelids have been properly concealed. I think a slightly bolder brow pairs really well with this look. So to achieve a bold brow, I always use two different brow products to give variation in both color and texture. It kind of stops the brow from looking blocky or cohesive. I'm first strengthening the shape with a brow pen, adding some faux hairs to both the inner corner and also the tail of the brow. Then taking the NYX eyebrow gel on a fine brush and using light strokes, I'm gonna add some extra intensity to the tail of the brow. Finishing off with some brow pomade, pushing all of those hairs up for a super textured brow. And here we have a little brow before and after. So much satisfaction right there. This Kat Von D palette is one of my favorites, but you can swap it out for any matte shadows that you own. Lightly dusting a pale yellow shade from the crease to the brow. And this is just to take down any tackiness from the eye primer. This gray shadow is a fab transition shade. I'm using the good old windscreen wiper motion to give the illusion of a more defined crease. Now this eye look is less about intricate crease work and it's more about the lower lash line. So bear with me. Using a precise pointed crease brush, I'm taking a deeper brown eyeshadow and etching that shade deeper into the socket. It might seem counterintuitive, but using dark shadows to build depth really frames the eye, making it look larger. So a big eyed look doesn't necessarily mean all pale eyeshadows, you know? Next, you will need any reflective eyeshadow. I think Still a Kitten is a cool one because it looks kind of bronzy in some light and then champagne in others. Press that shadow onto the mobile lid. I'm just using a finger because it's an underrated tool and it offers a lot of impact and no fallout. Going back with my precise crease brush to ensure that there are no distinct lines between our lid color and our crease color. I want the lash line to look very dense and very black, but not in a way that screams, you know, I'm wearing eyeliner. So take some gel liner on a precise brush and tight line from above. So angle the brush downwards and wiggle some of that gel liner into the lash bed. We're not really aiming to touch the skin here. Just make sure you really get in between those lashes. I'm also tight lining from underneath the lashes which is the same process, just wiggle the brush into the lash line. Giving the lashes a very light curl before popping on some Eyelure Texture Lashes. I love these. They're pretty natural, but they do have a little flare at the outer corner, which I find really helps to elongate the eye. Pop on some mascara, you know the drill. 
Now I often receive this question, how do I tight line the upper lash line with black and then put a nude eyeliner on the lower waterline without them mudding each other up? And I found that the key to this is do the lower lash line at the very end of the makeup. You will see what I mean when we get to that. Now to finish off the rest of the face, I'm contouring the cheekbones with this It Cosmetics palette. It has a very good ashy contour shade. I'm using a bigger, fluffier brush than I would normally for a softer, more diffuse contour. That might be enough highlight for you, but I want more. I am going totally overboard here and I'm loving it. The tops of the cheekbones, the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, the cupid's bow, the chin, the inner tear duct and a little sliver under the brow. Do you think I have enough highlight? I'm not sure. <laughs> if I had to pick one brand for blush, it would absolutely, without a doubt, be Milani. This one is a great nude shade and I find that it doesn't compete with any bold lip. Okay, so here comes the big eye transformation. We've given our black eyeliner about 15 minutes or so to migrate. Now clean up any transfer with a Q-tip. If you have chosen a long wearing formula, it shouldn't transfer any more beyond this point. Now line the lower waterline with a flesh colored eyeliner, but don't stop there. Bring the eyeliner onto the lash bed and onto the lash line. The idea here is to create the illusion that the white of the eye extends down much further than it actually does. Now this placement is shamelessly inspired by Nikki Tutorials, who often modifies the lower lash line. I think this is such an effective technique. Now take a stiff flat brush and some dark eyeshadow, trace a new lower lash line, a fraction below your real one, sandwiching that nude liner in between. That line is looking a little stark right now, so blend the lower perimeter with that small crease brush. And finally, add some mascara just to the tips of the lower lashes. You know I love a little before and after? I think the left eye here looks far more prominent and wide and awake. If you are lucky enough to be living in summer right now, I am so jealous I see your photos on Instagram. <laughs> we are going for an orangey coral. So lining the lips with an orange lip liner and feathering inwards. Top with a vibrant coral or orange lipstick and you have a really summery, fresh cocktail look. For our vampy lip option, great for Australians who are living in the cold, I'm starting with the MAC Night Moth Lip Liner. I adore this color, but it skips like nothing else. If you have a recommendation for a similar color in another formula, please let me know in the comments. I would be forever appreciative. I have lined the lip line and feathered inwards, but I'm leaving the body of the lips bare so that when I top with my lipstick, we get a little bit of a ombre effect. Pair it with an updo, a bit of a lacy dress, maybe some fierce earrings, and we are done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it. Come visit me on Instagram if you haven't already. It is my favorite social media. I hope that you all have a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye-bye.